What is going on YouTube? I've shot this now like 16 times because I can't form sentences together. That being said, today's tutorial is going to be beefy as all get out guys. So we're going to dive right in. First things first, you're going to want to make sure that you pick up or if you don't already have it, uh, Video Copilot's Element 3D. Phenomenal introductory like 3D platform integrated directly into After Effects. And it's really cool how seamlessly it works with Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D Lite, which you guys already have access to. All assets are below. This is the Andrew James 3D model transition from his Anyone Can Create video. I'm a huge Andrew James fan. Yeah, aside from all the JR Ollies and the Ben TKs and the Brandon Lees, I followed a little 16 year old kid years ago who was doing crazy things and that's who I kind of got inspired from. So Andrew, mad props to you and shout outs to you if this ever gets back to you. When he threw the phone up with a 3D model and then it just transitioned into the phone. I was like, what just happened? Had no clue how to do it. So I wanna show you guys how to do it. It won't be the same. Um, Andrew uses a couple different methods that we're not gonna use because we don't need to use it. He had, a, he had moving footage, we have a static shot. So a couple different uh, dynamics, but still the same like method in theory. So uh, anyways, there's gonna be a lot of tips, tricks, techniques that you guys can use, use them at your disposal. So long story short, let's dive right in and get rolling on this beast. Alrighty guys, we are fired up here in After Effects and we're ready to roll here. Um, first things first. This is more of a tutorial on the transition itself and, and animating the actual object. So because I purchased the object um, and I purchased the Element 3D ready uh, model, I'm not going to be showing you guys how to rig the model and do all of that. I will be going through how I you know, imported all of that in, uh, but this is more so about the transition than it is about you know getting everything in from Element 3D. If you guys want me to do a tutorial on that, cool, just leave a message in the comments or shoot me an email or whatnot and we can do a separate one. But for the sake of this tutorial, it's walking through importing that Element 3D ready object and then going ahead and rigging it for uh, this particular you know, look in this transition. So basically we have this, this scene you'll notice in the assets folder with me just throwing the phone up and then the phone disappears and falls out of view, right? So this is the clip that we're going to be using to create that effect. Uh, but just for the sake of showing you, I'm gonna speed up some of those parts. So again, if you wanna see that, just let me know, but I'm focusing a little bit more on the transition here. Uh, okay, all things aside, we got our comp set up, everything's ready to roll. So the first thing that we do once we have our comp in our, our, our clip in our composition is we're gonna go ahead and create a new solid and we're gonna create that element 3D layer. So E3D or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and then go ahead and search for element. And then we are gonna go ahead and scene set up this beast. And then we are gonna go ahead and begin importing in our file. Now, if you got an element 3D ready file, you're already ready to go. You can literally select this file, hit open, and everything should populate and be predefined and you're ready to roll. Mine didn't work because mine was uh, ridiculous for whatever reason. Um, I think my bump maps and everything got jacked up. Uh, so yeah, you'll notice here, like none of my stuff was working. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And for the sake of speeding this up, I'm gonna head and show you how I imported this and re-rigged it. So again, guys, uh, gonna speed this up. Alrighty guys, so we are back and we have our uh, initial model re-rigged and set back up and ready to roll. So uh, anyways, that being said, that's pretty much it. So our 3D model is ready to roll and you'll notice that because we have this iPhone screen layer separated, we're gonna be able to target that guy later. So if we go ahead and hit okay, um, we've got this 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 phone screen directly on our canvas and I go if I go ahead and set it to full You could zoom in there and see we're we're already we've already got this phone screen uh, And if you select down our layer and go to our particle replicator um, and then particle look uh, And then particle rotation you can go ahead and start flipping this thing around and seeing how it's looking um, And how it's reacting in 3d space already 
um, considering our environment. Now we don't have any HDRI maps set up, anything like that for our environment, and we're really not gonna have to do too much of that. Um, I know that, uh, you know, when it comes to 3D, it's really more about the lighting and, you know, to get that realism. Um, uh, so, uh, we're gonna do some light stuff when it comes to that, but not get really too in-depth with it. So the next step that you're gonna wanna do uh, when we have our element layer on the canvas, and what we can do to kind of look, look at this a little bit better, is we can go into our group one settings and our look settings, and we can go ahead and set the size up a little bit so we can see what's going on in our actual model. So let's bring our, uh, our resolution back down to half or whatnot or whatever works for you guys. And then if you go in here, um, you'll notice in the project files that you have an asset called iPhone X screen. Let's go ahead and bring it out to the canvas and we're gonna go ahead and uh, solo this layer right now and you're gonna notice that it's way too big right if we scale out this thing's huge well it's actually replicating the resolution of an iPhone X screen so I took this into Photoshop at 1125 by 2436 uh, ratio and then just replace the image to get this but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our iPhone screen layer and we're gonna go ahead and pre-compose this and we're gonna call this iPhone uh, screen you can call it animation board or whatever you know suits you we're gonna leave all the attributes alone because we want those to run those that ratio to remain the same we can go ahead and go into our iPhone and board here and it doesn't matter what you do uh, this is where you can animate the screen so if you wanted to drop your video here that's where I dropped mine uh, for my outro bumper uh, you know video uh, you can animate this screen, you could do whatever here, and it's gonna update in your phone. Now here's the trick. Back in your main layer, you're gonna wanna go ahead and turn this off because this is a custom texture that we're gonna set in the Element 3D. So go back to your Element 3D uh, layer, and we're gonna go scroll down to our uh, custom layers and then custom texture and maps. And we're gonna select that iPhone screen animation board. And then we are going to go back into our scene and then where our screen is, we're gonna drop down to where our screen layer is, and you'll notice in our textures area, we have this diffuse option that's already rigged to that iPhone X screen, and that's being pulled in externally from our original model. Now, if we go ahead and click this, we can drop down and select our custom layer, that profile, so or, or that custom texture that we set. So go ahead and click that, and you'll notice in the phone immediately it's already updating. So no matter what we put in that phone, that screen is going to update, and we're going to have all of our stuff inside the phone. This is a really cool trick and makes your life a whole lot easier, especially if you're not an animator, right? So cool. We're already ready to go. So now here's the awesome part. I can go back into my iPhone screen animation board and at any time I can adjust this, add a video, do whatever, and it's gonna update and change on the fly and make my life awesome for animating that, that 3D object uh, in real time. So this is really cool, cool. Um, so anyways, yeah, got that configured and now we are ready to go ahead and move on to step two. Step two, we're gonna go ahead and clean up this plate and make sure that we uh, have a decent background to zoom into when our animation peaks at the top. So we wanna basically remove this phone as it's falling down. Uh, the good thing about mine is even when the, the animation or the phone is falling, at that particular point, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be a lot of smoke and mirrors at that point. Uh, so if you have a busy background, it actually works better. But in this case, we're just basically gonna go to where to somewhere where the animation's at the top, it's reached its peak, and that's where we're gonna wanna replace our phone. So go ahead and select your clip, split the layer right at about that point that you're happy with. Um, go ahead and pre-compose uh, the layer. Um, and name this something like, uh, I don't know, background clean up or something, whatever. Uh, and then go into that background cleanup layer, duplicate the footage, and then we are going to go ahead and select an area of our footage that's very similar in size um, to our and area to our uh, phone. So this this works for. And again, we're gonna be. This is gonna be really dirty way of showing you guys, but um, hopefully this works and you guys understand it. But now that you've selected that area, go ahead and select your position, and we're just gonna kind of move this over until it sits 
on top of our phone area over here. And go ahead and turn that off, uh, that layer off, and then select the mask. Uh, go ahead and select the keyframe stopwatch on this because what we are going to do now is make sure that we animate our mask path properties to be over the phone at all times. Now, because mine's so small, I can obvious, I can honestly tell you that we're going to have to do some cleanup work on this a little bit later, but that's all right. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, guys, so we've got our mask here, and if you go ahead and turn your mask layer back on and you play it through, you should see your circle kind of just fall over the phone and out of view. And if you're, if you did this right uh, and you got the positioning right and everything, it should cover your phone. Now, what I would probably do is I would go back into my mask path properties and I would, let's go ahead and feather this guy out. It's gonna reveal more, so you're gonna wanna increase your expansion uh, to kinda cover that, and then play it back, make sure everything looks good. And then right about here, we see the phone kind of come back into play. And a lot of this has to do with the selection that we made and the position on that selection. So what you could probably do on this particular area is you could, in theory, now I'm not going to do this because I'm thinking right about this point we're going to already be zooming. Nah, we might not yet. So what I would go ahead and do, just for the sake of doing this, is pre-compose the layer again. And where we're going to want, what we're going to want to do is fix right here. So right about here, uh, everything looks good. So I could really literally freeze frame this area. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and select background pre-comp and then move all attributes one more time and then right here we're going to split the layer and i'm going to freeze this frame so go to time and then go to freeze frame and then you'll notice that everything stops right there so boom and then boom we have a freeze frame right so that is our background plate it's just another way that you can clean this up now you could do this initially when the when the background of your area stops now if you have a busy background this is harder to get rid of especially if you have more uh, you know movement in your camera so you're just gonna have to plan your shot and figure out what kind of shot that you have to work with with a busier background you can probably get away with this because it's a lot you have a lot more smoke and mirrors to hide this and you wouldn't even have to worry about that so anyways go back to your main comp and you'll notice now that we have this phone disappears at the very top and you really don't even notice anything. You don't notice the phone falling. You don't really notice anything anymore. It's slightly there in the middle of the screen. You can see it if you're playing it back, but unless you're looking for it, you're really not going to see it because your eye is going to focus on that, L that uh, 3D object. Now, again, if you plan the shot, you can get it much cleaner than I did. But anyways, for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to move forward. All right, so... Now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and go on to step three and animate our 3D model. First things first, our background layer, we want to go ahead over to that where the phone pops out of view. And I want to go ahead and set my scale because I'm going to use this as my metric to determine, uh, determine um, how quickly I want to animate my phone. So go ahead and set your scale. Something like that's fine. F9 to easy ease. And then let's go ahead and, you know, uh, do something that dramatize that uh, that animation a little bit more. Once we have that set up, play it back, make sure that looks cool, looks fine to me. Um, and now I'm going to go back here to where my phone is. First thing I'm going to do is create a new camera because we need to be able to make sure that we focus our positions on that. Bring the camera above my E3D layer, go ahead and set new, and then we're going to select light. We're just going to select a, a standard parallel light is fine. Intensity is at 120. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my phone screen lights up a bit more and that looks good. Um, you'll notice if you toggle that on and off that it's affecting our 3D model with, with lighting now. And just make sure you're happy with the lighting. I'm not going to get into lighting in this tutorial, um, but lights are extre lighting is extremely important in selling realism on three in a 3D environment. So just keep that in mind. But for the sake of this tutorial, all we need to do is be able to see the, the, the face of the phone and light it up a bit so that we can see it. So that being said, let's go into our camera and our element. Actually, let's go into our camera. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set, uh, I'm pretty sure we don't need a point of interest, but I'm going to go ahead and set one. And then I've set my position keyframe. Go to our element 3D layer. And these are the things that we're going to want to fix. 
All right, first things first, we wanna go ahead and fix the size of our, uh, of our actual um, object. So something like 4.8, I believe last time was fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my Y to where it's turned around, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the X and then the Z a little bit to somewhat match what that's looking like at the top. Now here's a really important thing and um, I might have mentioned it earlier. If you're committing to the position on your camera, then commit to the position on your camera. If you're committing to animating the position on your uh, Element 3D layer, I highly suggest you do that. Um, if you want to go ahead and match this up a bit more, select your opacity layer, turn that to 50%, 50 and then you can do a bit more fine tuning here uh, in order to, to line that up a bit more and get it matching the way that you guys want it to match. Um, and yeah, it's looking good. I still think, you know, something like that. All right, cool. So it goes up and then this, all right, cool. So our element 3D layer, if you go ahead and select that, select your opacity, go ahead and set an opacity keyframe and zero this sucker out and then bring it in on that first frame where the phone needs to be in frame. And now we have this boom, this phone in frame. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, there are multiple different ways to handle this. We're gonna handle it our way, but Andrew James did it a different way. He created a mocha track and he tracked his background. Um, so those trees would be good track points. So as they're moving, he created a track point and as, uh, as that, and then created a null. He then parented the animation and the position of uh, the actual object to that null so the phone moved alongside the background. Now, if you have a busier background, you can get away with a lot more smoke and mirrors. For our sake, we can't really do that. But for this tutorial, since we're animating our background on our own, we're gonna go ahead and control the physics on our own. So since we have our position set right here, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is scroll to the end of our transition and we're gonna wanna make sure that A, the position on our uh, element 3D layer falls back to that center point. So that center point is 960 by 540. And then what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and zero out our values on our phone so that we are ready to scroll into this. So if you, if you notice, you can zero everything out right here and boom, you have everything set up the way that you need it to. And you'll notice if you play this back, cool, we've got our phone falling right back into view and we're ready to roll. Our phone animates back into screen and the one thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to set up our uh, the position of our object so that it matches. So that's a 90 degree angle on our Z. And then we're going to want to punch in uh, for our camera area. Now we've handled the Z, that we've zeroed everything out and we've got the position of our object, our element object, back zeroed out. Uh, but what we, and we have it turned, so we, we have everything set up the way that we want it to, right? So if we play this back, boom, our camera is now sideways, but at the end of the transition, we want our camera to zoom in all the way on our object. And we wanna just move the, the phone out of view and end it right here. So boom, we have something that looks like this. And that looks awesome, right? So we're getting there. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to make sure that uh, our um, the position in our element 3D layer falls short a little bit sooner. If you go ahead and hit U to open up all of those values, and then we go to our position keyframe and we move it back a little bit, it falls into view a little bit quicker. So look, we have this little boom, and then might even bring it out a little bit more, so. Boom, falls in, and that looks really cool. Awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead, we've got motion blur selected on all of our layers, so it looks really good, so make sure that that's uh, ticked. And then let's go ahead and let's do a couple more you know, subtle animations. So maybe when it's like right here, uh, it's, you know, I don't want my Y, maybe I still want my, maybe I want my Y to spin one more time. So it's doing a couple more rotations. And this is really, guys, where you're gonna go ahead and experiment. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play around and I'm gonna um, play around with my uh, rotations a little bit more and uh, you guys can just watch me and then as soon as I'm done, uh, we can talk about what we've done. All right, cool.
Anyways, uh, we have something that looks like this. Now, what I did is I went ahead and um, if you want my exact parameters, um, right here on my, uh, what do we have? Our uh, X rotation, I set it to 300, and then I went ahead and set that 300 to move out to a full rotation, so it ends on a full rotation right there. And then uh, going down, uh, original position here, um, and then on uh, the Y rotation, I set it to uh, negative one and 11.5, and then it's supposed to end completely on a negative one so it doesn't have too much more of a rotation to pull off at the very end um, and then uh, lastly I left everything else alone and one of the things that I will do is I'm going to easy ease the camera position um, because I find that it looks a little bit smoother and matches the background if you do something that kind of pulls the the animation of your camera in as well so you have something that looks like this boom uh, okay cool so anyways all right, so now that we have this, we've got our camera set up, we have everything, you know, kind of looking pretty decent. It's not flawless, but it looks pretty good. Um, one of the things that I would like to say is that sometimes the motion, like After Effects is built in motion, doesn't look as natural, and to kind of dramatize the effect, one of the, the key things to do is to go ahead and set a new uh, adjustment layer and go ahead and create uh, a force motion blur effect and then go ahead and look it up and then type in force motion blur and if you go ahead and set this up to something like 8 or 16 um, and then shutter angle of 180 or you know even 240 or 360 looks pretty good the more that you dramatize it the slower your render is going to be um, but you really only need it on that camera angle um, and then if you quarter this and play it back, it might, it might not. We'll see. Uh, let's give it a minute and see what it looks like. All right, so cool. Let's play this back and see what we got. I think that motion blur sells a little bit better, but that's just me, especially like in right there and like areas like that. To me, that just looks so much better because of how quick the camera's coming in. Um, but that's just me. Uh, if I were you, I would go ahead and play with that and, and set up the, the parameters that you like, but I personally just think that looks a lot better. So you can kind of see the original motion blur right here. You see the banding on the edges versus the CC force motion blur, which is a lot more edge blurry and, and whatever. So play with that. That's another way to, to really sell the effect. Uh, but lastly, we're going to go ahead and create that little punch out kind of, or that, that move through the object thing that we did in the last tutorial that really sells the effect. So right here at the very end of the transition where our transition stops, um, we are going to go ahead and create our final step. All right, guys, we are coming to the uh, tail end of this beast mode. Um, and you'll see so far we've got a really, really, really cool animation. If we play it back... Um, So far, it's really awesome. Like, even that part where the, the phone falls out of view, the smoke and mirrors really hides it, and you can't even tell. So first thing first, and I know that I say that all the time. Um, okay, cool. So model rebuild assets. Uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead in here to an asset, and I'm going to, you know what? I think it's in this layer. No. Nope. Nope. Okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and add a video and I'm going to replace uh, my screen just so you guys can see this. But okay, so let's go into our iPhone animation board again and where we have this layer set, I'm going to go ahead and drop in this video right here and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate my video. Just this is an extra little tip, uh, side note, um, because I'm going to animate this beast and then I'm going to set the scale to something like this because what I really want to show you guys is how I achieve this effect so now I have my video playing right here but if I go back to my main file you'll see in my phone now I've got the video playing in the phone so boom right here it hits and this is problem because it hits upside down so what this means is I need to go into my E3D layer and I need to fix my animation from being negative one to a regular uh, 90 sorry to negative 90 so it actually flips a different way so boom awesome looks great uh, first things first go ahead and mute that layer all right cool so boom 
got this cool animation, and now my, my video continues to play. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is our asset, whether it's the iPhone clip or whatever asset that you used inside your animation board, you're gonna wanna add that asset to the top. So in your, in your case, it's gonna be the iPhone X screen, and you're gonna wanna line that up to match, but in my case now, it's gonna be the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line up my video and it's going to start immediately when this hits. So now that I've lined it up, I'm gonna go ahead and clip it at the same exact place um, as my other one and I'm going to go ahead and set the opacity to something like 50. Now what I need to do is go ahead and scale it up so it matches to a T. Boom, that looks good. And then I need to go ahead and set a keyframe and then animate that back down to something at 100. Now I can go ahead and set my transparency back here at zero. So as soon as my screen hits, boom, this cuts in and it looks seamless and now it animates back down. All right, well that's great and everything, but I wanna make that a little bit more seamless. So let's go ahead, we're gonna easy ease those keyframes. We're gonna go into our graph editor. We are going to um, speed ramp that up a bit. And let's see what, you know, something like that looks pretty cool. Might lengthen that animation so it does something like that. Okay, awesome. Now here's the trick. Here's the million dollar trick is let's go ahead and add turbulent displace to our layer. Let's set the amount to 66. Let's set the size to 33 or something like that. I don't know, maybe even less, something like that. We're gonna leave the complexity at one and we're gonna set the evolution to uh, uh, alt stop or alt click the stopwatch and set an expression time times 1800, something like that. And then we are gonna go ahead and set a keyframe on our amount and size. And then we are gonna go out to where our transition stops and we're going to put that at zero. So put your amount to zero and you should be good. You can even put your size to zero so that animates down too. So you have this little, you know, uh, like effect where it almost looks like, you know, you've gone through the phone or something's happened and it hit and then there's a little bit of, it kind of feels like pressure almost or, or something, right? That adds a little bit of that last minute, you know, feel of something happened at the end, right? There's a feeling, there's more of an emotion there. So cool. We have basically completed our entire animation. Let's watch this sucker back. Boom. Looks so awesome, guys. And uh, just a wow. So there you go, the Andrew James transition. We got some awesome stuff coming up, guys. Uh, one thing that I do wanna mention is I did open up a Patreon account. So if you guys wanna subscribe to the channel, uh, basically you're just gonna be funding me continuing to be able to do what I'm doing, to bring you the best techniques and the best uh, you know, new tips and tricks and whatnot on how to do what these guys are doing to bring a little bit more firepower to your arsenal. That's really all you're contributing to. If you know what, if this channel blows up to 100, 1,000, a million, it won't change the initiative here, guys. So, you know, I appreciate everything. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys. And here's a little sneak peek of what we're going to be doing in uh, a week or two. So, yeah, take care.